Yeah, so that was my first. I've gone through a lot of bases. I played carbon bass in the States. Very happy. The quality of the instrument, the sound of the instrument, the company. Um, and I say that in a lot of ways. Only good things to say about it. This is an SD4000. It's fairly new model. Um, I usually have on all my bases a speed tuner. This one is actually, I haven't received my, my personal model yet, but my personal base, but usually I have speed tuner in all my bases, and this one doesn't. It fits down to into a deep example. It's like different. Yeah, but, um, it's, a, it's a great sounding instrument, and it's, it's rare that I find an instrument that right away where I'm like, okay, I love everything about it. There's always something I love about it. Something that bugs me, but this one is, is, is perfect. What was it about carbon that uh, drew you to and vice versa that brought the drug that carbon to what used to be endorsed by it? Well, I've tried their different gear. They make tons of different gear. Uh, I've tried uh, the cables, their, their PA systems I've worked with. I've worked with the bases before a little bit. And just everything that they make is quality. And their attitude of the people at, the, at not just the factory and the company, but the stores, great attitude. Um, it's, it's all made in the U.S. Um, and, you know, I have, I've had really good experience with them. So when they approach me, it wasn't hard for me to, to say yes. But yeah, my, my first guitar, actually, if I really dig back, this is kind of interesting. It was, uh, it was an electric that uh, I picked up at like flea market or something. This was like when I was about like, five or six, and it had a young string of <laughs> Just do that. Um, but then, eventually, actually, uh, I got a nylon string guitar and started taking lessons. And, um, got the electric. Just went from there. Also, this particular guitar is actually um, originally like an old uh, 70s Fender Strat. Yeah, uh, it was from like 79 and uh, had a custom neck put on it. And, uh, people always ask me about the pickups. These are uh, Seymour Duncan uh, classic stacks, and this is a Hot Wheels. And uh, I've got. Uh, Detuner on here, which is very cool. Hip shot, so. <laughs> it's great, it just makes it really, yeah. really easy for a lot of the you know, drop D stuff. Um, yeah. So forth, so. Uh, it's still actually a flavor guitar. Yeah, this kind of just became my uh, my workhorse guitar. You know, one guitar that always goes with me. And one of the things I really love about this is I can go from a real kind of bluesy, stratty sound. It's kind of like combining the best of all the worlds. Yeah, I mean, yeah. like the, the, the blues sound of it, a little bit like it's like wow, wow, wow. Right. Yeah. 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 Then you go into off. like the zero one type of sound. Yeah. Uh, like you mentioned, it's EBS, I'm actually uh, endorsing their pedals, and uh, I love this pedal. This is called the Multi Comp. Uh, this is probably the most transparent uh, compressor out there. Gigs or big arena baseball stadium type gigs or what really floats your boat with us? That's a great question. I, I I don't know. It's I love the big places, but there's it's harder to get close to the audience because you usually have the pit and stage is deeper, and then you have the pit and then the people. And the people in the back, you're so sometimes I hate to say it, you're so disconnected to them. 
in a small place, you know, a lot of times the sound is better, you know, uh, especially compared to like the play festival, it barely have a sound check or whatever. Um, and uh, everything's more controlled, and, and everybody so you can see everyone, not everyone, but you can see a lot of the people, and you can, they're, they're close, and they can hear, a lot of times if they're up front, they can even hear the, the stage sound, what it sounds like, part of what it sounds like to us being up there, and I think that's, that's very cool. You know. Yeah, more of the, the club kind of gigs. Yeah. Yeah. I favor those where you can really, you know, the people are up close and they kind of get involved and there's people falling on the stage and <laughs> it gets crazy. Because you know? um, that affects your performance too. You know? It's just it's more connected with the audience. You find there's certain places that seem to want to more than others and certain fans that you think, I remember, I remember it from last year or something. Or... Yeah, yeah. It, it's happened to be, and it, it's amazing too when it's like thousands of people in the audience and, and somebody you haven't seen in two years. It's in the front row. Mm. It, it's just a uh, you know, small world. What are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> Not me, anybody else. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what about you, Rob? What's your view? I'm always surprised when I see someone come back, you know, and they're like, hey! <laughs> they're right up there, you know, giving you a high five. Yeah. You know, it's like, you know, hey, I know that guy. Yeah. Yeah. You get, yeah. you get screaming girls up there, like, holding big banners, like, like, oh, we love you, Beyond, we love you. <laughs> that sort of oh, stuff. no, we don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 that's, that's, you know, it's all kind of yeah. great stuff happening. Yeah. When you play small club, you can just come out and see the bands, big bands after and that sort of stuff. When you play a big arena, just don't allow that. It's always, there's always that, yeah. unless you've got all the passes on you, it's all sorts of that before, you just can't do it. Yeah. And it must be so frustrating for you guys. When you play, you see friends, and you can't get to them, and they can't get to you. And well, I think it's it's to me it's frustrating too because that's that's touring is the biggest part of how bands survive today, and being getting the chance to say hi to fans and, and signing autographs and being there when they buy the t-shirts or, or or signing CDs or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a huge part, and it's something that we like to do. And, and if you don't get to do that. It's a little frustrating. So what's work. next for, so for, for Soul Sign? Right now we're, uh, we're, we're going to release the album and then we have a couple of shows in December in, in Los Angeles and then in the spring we're, we're looking at uh, getting back to, going back to Europe and playing Sweden and Norway, um, Germany and, uh, yeah. and uh, the UK. How would you say the audiences differ from Places in Europe and also compared to uh, different states in America, do you have like a different vibe of other people, or, or some maybe go down south and more up there, or they're more laid back in the north or whatever? And what's it like for you? What's the vibe like? For I love you know I love Los Angeles. I love living here, um, but it's the worst place on the planet to play, I think, for for any rock band. Mm -hmm. And I think that the, the rest of the U.S. is fine. It's not as trend-oriented uh, and it's not as bad. It's not probably as good as, you know, being in Europe or South America or Asia. Um, the people are people, and I think there's there's fans, I think anywhere, including Los Angeles, there's fans for, for, for any type of, any type of, Good artists, there's always going to be fans. So, what songs uh, do you get shouting out to hear? You get certain ones, oh, play so and so, and then you end up playing them. So, I mean, you have to switch the set around. They keep asking for that work, we play, we'll best play for those guys. Well, I think I think it, we're going to get a lot of that as soon as the album is out. Right now, we're, we're, we're playing like pre promotion for the album, you yeah. know, so we're, we're not getting, we're getting good response on. on on a lot of the songs, and and uh, I think we're, we're throwing some covers in. We've, we've done a cover of The Wall, and we've been doing some, uh, you know, uh, Led Zeppelin, various different things. And, and the audience uh, seems to love those as well, because I think we, we do our own version of them. But it, we're getting really good response on on our own material that a lot of people haven't even heard before. How would you actually uh, describe? Style of uh, soul song. If you have to say it, it's modern and classic 
rock slash metal keep on heavy groove. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's one of, one of the things I think the band just has the driving groove that people kind of latch on to here, you know. Melodic mm -hmm. groove oriented. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's no doubt you can tell when you play that you must mess around with the drum stage. I actually thought about this after the fact, after we started playing together with this lineup that we do a lot of what Led Zeppelin used to do, like whatever happens, and, and I love that. I don't see enough of that. Just, you know, it's great that bands rehearse and things are perfect and tight, but sometimes it, it also makes it more. Well, so what do you guys use? There's certain types of strings that you like to uh, take some. Uh, I'm actually using Gideos. Uh, yeah, these are the uh, 1942. But I, I kind of fluctuate sometimes. I've used the, uh, the tens, yeah. and I've gone all the way to, to 11s, but now I'm on nines. Yeah. I've been endorsed by uh, a small company out of New York called Mari. The last strings uh, founded by a guy named Daniel Mari. He used to make strings for John Lennon and uh, Jimi Hendrix and everybody back in the day. And, uh, He's been around some time and he makes, he makes really good strings. They're very consistent sound. And, uh, you know, they stay too well. And I play those strings for uh, 13 years now. And uh, I really love to check out our website, soulsign.us. We got some clips on there and pictures, and we, we're going to try to update it as uh, much as possible with uh, the videos and the things. And uh, just uh, look out because we're going to start doing uh, more. Four days and a, a great way to reach the band too uh, is via Facebook and MySpace. We have those pages as well. We look out for the music and the shows. We look out for Soul Science. We'll see you guys soon.